All right, hello, every ponies, every peoples, every every other person that I've forgotten the house. Welcome to another Tune Critic Y2K interview. Today with me, I have. Uh, let me see how exactly do I sum this dude up. Um, you may know him if you recognize his voice as the newest addition to my little portal as Shining Armor. Which honestly, dude, congrats on that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It, wow. Seriously. <laughs> this is too oily. Sorry. <laughs> this is Zigmar Assassin. What is up, man? What up? What up, everybody? Hi. <laughs> uh, first off, <sighs> I just want to say thank you so much. This is a great honor to have you on this. Oh, you know, and the honor's all mine, dude. All right. It's it's, it's good to be here. Mm. Honest. So I gotta ask, why Zigmar Assassin? I'm assuming you're like a Kingdom Hearts fan. <laughs> Way back in 2004. When I first made my YouTube account, um, I was in junior high and Kingdom Hearts 2 had just come out. And my favorite organization 13 member was Zigbar, uh, you know, the guy with the eye patch and the guns and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, and my good friend, um, Disney Freaks, uh, was a big Kingdom Hearts nut too. And so when he helped me make my YouTube account because I was technologically impaired at the time. Uh, we did Zigbar Assassin. And you might know that Assassin is misspelled. That was an accident. There's supposed to be another S on the end there, but whatever. Oops. I don't care. I keep it. <laughs> I re- it's, so, yeah, all the bronies, I guess, colloquial, colloquially, <laughs> geez, call me Ziggy, like, or Dan. Dan or Ziggy. That's what I'm colloquially known as, I suppose. So, that's why Zigbar Assassin. I am a Kingdom Hearts fan. So, what got you into voice acting, and how long have you been doing it? I've always been... My little brother and my parents constantly make fun of me for this, but I've always been fascinated with uh, animation, cartoons. Uh, I find myself constantly judging cartoons and how well they're animated and how well the voice work is. And um, So I wanted to somehow get into that, and what got me into that was that abridged series that I started when I was in uh, when I barely started high school I started it with my friend Disney Freaks it was of Sonic X ah uh, we, we made 11 episodes before we decided to go on extended hiatus for a while we're, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll probably boot it up again but we're, we're going on extended hiatus for reasons that I'll probably explain later in this interview but that's how I originally got into it when I tried casting the abridged series i mean i had a talent pool of myself and my friends and my friends didn't exactly have the uh the gung-ho to do most of all the characters so they're like daniel why don't you do it daniel just be shadow that one time (laughs) daniel Daniel, why don't you be eggman i'm like uh fine so that is how i got into it what's the best thing about what you do i'd say watching the finished product I mean, there are some people out there who, like, absolutely refuse to watch themselves because they'll be afraid of, like, judging themselves too harshly. Like, I know a few VAs that, like, are like, oh, I don't want to watch myself. But I love watching myself. And, like, for for instance, take, um, what was, okay, take Pokemon Ponies, for example. Um, Pokemon Reenacted by Ponies by JJK Movies. Hmm. I was recently a uh, big Brockintosh in that (laughs) Uh, yeah it's awesome his eyes are closed and everything and he does that annoying thing where he explains to the audience why something is super effective take that for example i love that i mean some people say like oh i can't watch it because i'll notice all my mistakes well if you notice your mistakes i just take that as an opportunity to go okay here's what i can do better next time right so it's it's and i enjoy um just watching the finished product because people approach me about doing these things and I'm like, okay. Um, and they tell me about it and I'm like, sure, sure. And you know, obviously sometimes I have to audition like for my little portal, but I'm really, really excited to see how he, uh, I, uh, Christian's cartoons is going to animate shining armor with his style. Like I'm just excited to see whatever I'm going to come out in. And I'm absolutely happy to help with anything that people want so that is the best thing about what i do just watching the finished product and being glad that i was able to make something that people like and laugh at where did your inspiration for sonic x abridged come from dare i ask Uh, 
we're 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 back to the abridged. Aren't yeah, we? I just want I just wanted to like get an answer to that and then like forget everything well, else. <laughs> okay, well, <clears throat> Sonic X is probably one of the worst. Like, have you ever heard of Four Kids? Yes, I have, unfortunately. Oh, okay. <laughs> Four Kids totally slaughtered this anime. Okay, like they could have made it cool because I've seen some of the Japanese like the original Japanese episodes with English subs and it's really good. Four kids just killed it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They they really really did. They they made okay, there are police officers in the four kids version that have revolvers and rifles and whenever they fire their guns, they sound like laser beams. <laughs> it's like pew 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 pew. I'm like, dude, I can see the bullet cases being discharged from your gun. What Ugh. <laughs> and of course, the whole Tales and Cosmos scene, like right near the oh, end. Oh God, no! <laughs> the other problem with that anime is that it, it's like a it's like Sonic 06. It's like a bad fan fiction. Mm. I swear, like so- Sonic and his friends go to Earth and and like, uh, <laughs> meet this kid. And then, sure, we have in the middle of the show where we're like all of the game enemies come in like chaos and shadow and like we have some plots based off the games but then the final season was tales and cosmo and that was completely made up so so the basically the reason that my friend disney freaks and i decided to do sonic x abridged is because really the only good sonic x abridged dub that's out there was the one episode that shady vox did Mm. if you have you ever seen that yes i have actually yeah so we took advantage of that and the fact that people wanted more and we were like, okay, you know what? This is a crappily dubbed English show that everyone like hates for four kids for slaughtering. Just like Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, so, boy. Yeah, they slaughtered Yu-Gi-Oh too. We're going to shoot you with our invisible guns. Have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so so we decided to do this because we, he's my, he was my best friend and we really wanted to try um, something new with And we had taken, like, video editing classes in high school, and so we wanted to do something with them. And that was what we chose to do. And it was a mild success. I mean, each of the videos uh, has a couple thousand views. And we've gotten better over time. But we're on extended hiatus for the time being because um, Disney Freaks and I are going to be gone for two years pretty soon. So, like, yeah. We're, we're, We're going on... Religious journeys of self-discovery, I guess you could say. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, ha- ha- have you ever heard of Mormons? Uh, yes, I have, actually. He and I are Mormons. We're, we're both Mormons, and so... Hey, when I don't judge, so it's all cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that, by the way. I was debating whether or not to bring that no, up, but... It's fine, you know what? It, if it doesn't, like, if... I don't have a personal problem with it. I've never had a problem with it. If you if you do what you do, cool. As long as you don't shove it in my face, yeah. it's fine. No, I, I, I never, ever shove it in anyone's face. When you're uh, an active Mormon and you are 18 or 19, you kind of have to go on this two-year thing called a mission uh-huh. where you go you, where you go to some place. I don't know where I'm going yet, but my friend Disney Freaks got sent to Pittsburgh, and he's there right now. I'll be leaving in a few months, I think. Enough time for me to actually do the voice the the voiceover projects I'm in, obviously. Mm. Um, but in a few months, I will be leaving somewhere. I don't know where yet, but that's just how it goes when you're a Mormon. You have to go on a mission for two years. So We're on extended hiatus until we're both back, and we both agreed that we would reboot the series with our advanced skills so that we have now. All right, now we get to the good stuff. Hot oh stuff. yes, the, the, the thing you are all here for—the pony stuff. Stop, stop talking about Sonic X Bridge that I don't watch. Talk about ponies. <laughs> okay. I know the feeling too. When I first started out, I did a lot of Sonic stuff. I did two things. I did Sonic Rangers Lightspeed Rescue, which was very crappily done, and, <laughs> and Sonic Red Dwarf. And those are dead for like good. I'm like, I am never doing that again. Never. <laughs> yeah, we might reboot it when we both get back, but yeah. On to the pony stuff. All right. How did you become a brony and how long have you been one? Okay. Um, my story is actually a unique one. Um, I became a brony last year. 
um, February of 2012, I believe it was, when I officially decided, eh, I like this show. <laughs> I like it. I like this show. Um, what happened was I was kind of going through a a hard time with school. I was a senior in high school. I had senioritis like no tomorrow. I was mm -hmm. ready to get out of there. And being big in the theater department, I recently got screwed over. You know, like I was helping. I was like breaking my back with all these shows and stuff. And then like their last show, they put me as like this really, really minor part in the final musical. And I'm like, what are you? You know, so I was like, I had senioritis. The theater department screwed me over. It was. Ugh, Let me guess. Know. I'm going to take a stab here. It cured what? depression, didn't it? It actually did. I, I mean, knew I, it. I, I, I mean, I, I know it's kind of cliche and a lot of your viewers are probably face palming right no, now. No, no, it's just everybody, almost everybody that I've interviewed, I always oh. ask, like, so is, so is it cured your depression? Yes. Yeah, it, it did. But, 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 but there's something deeper to it. Um, and th this is why I was one of the first to outcry at this. But the pony that got me to being a brony was none other than our fair derpy hooves. Nice. Like, I was still kind of, in, like, I didn't know leet speak. I didn't know the internet memes. Mm. And so I was on, like, meme base trying to figure out what everything means. And by the way, I am very fluent now. I, I know all the jokes and stuff, oh, by God. the way. <laughs> um, so, so I found derp. And I was like, oh, well, I, I, I know derp. And then there's this pony. And I was like, oh, this is, this is a pony. And I'm like, oh, look at her eyes. She's so cute. She has bubbles. She has bubbles on her flank. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I was like, this is, it, 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 and of, of course I've heard of My Little Pony and I just was like, people, grown people watch this. And so my girlfriend, who I hadn't started dating yet, but back then she was just my friend and coworker at where I work. I told her about it. I said, so there's this pony with like weird eyes. And she's like, oh, derpy hooves. And I'm like, oh, derpy hooves. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, well, should I, um, should I watch this? And she's like, sure, if you want. So. So the first episode I watched was Over a Barrel. You know, the Old West? Yeah, the one with Brayburn. The Old West episode. And the reason I watched it is because I looked online and it said that there was like a fight at the end. And I was like, ooh, a fight in a little girl show? And I just loved it, how they were throwing pie at each other. And like how it somehow caused the clock tower to fall over. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, pie. ballistic pie or something. I don't know what it is. But I just love that episode. And I was like, okay, I have to watch more. I was hooked. I watched like all of season one and season two was almost done at the time. So I caught up easily. And then I started dating my girlfriend and we bonded over ponies. And here we are. I am a brony. And so about a year now, I guess you could say I've been a brony. Has becoming a brony made your work stronger? I believe so. Um, because... When I made Sonic X Abridged and before I was a brony, I only had, like, I did all my voices from a rock band microphone. <laughs> like, I just plugged it in the computer and did the stuff. But now I have this fancy schmancy, uh, I'm looking at it right now, it has a pop filter and everything. I, I don't, yeah, it, it has made my work stronger because I've been involved in more stuff. And I haven't just been doing pony stuff, I've been also approached by machinima people to voice in their Halo machinimas and uh other animations that are outside of ponies because they saw my pony demo reels that are on my channel and they're like hey yeah so uh, we want you to voice the um the uh villain in our halo machinima but you, with big max voice but could you get rid of the accent <laughs> so uh, so i'm like sure you okay cool so i am now the villain in a halo machinima with yeah, because of my Big Mac reel. <laughs> so it has made my work stronger in that more people have taken notice of what of the voiceovers that I do. So, And I've been producing animations and such. Like, as you know, you've seen Bo Galbronis and stuff like that. Yeah, so, I have. What's your favorite season <laughs> and episode of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic? Oh, 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 oh. oh. I, I had to ask this one, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Um... Ah, well, it's not season three because <laughs> <laughs> too short. And well, I'm okay with the alicorn thing, but I'm not going to talk about that. 
<laughs> um, let's see. Favorite scene. I- I'd have to say season season two. Season two had some good stuff. The Discord episodes, perhaps, maybe. Let's see. Lunar Eclipse. This is a mixed response. I liked season two the best. It had the best variety of episodes, but my favorite um, episode is not in season two, but in season three. And that would be the episode where Discord returns. Uh, that's Keep Calm and Flutter On. Yes. I loved that episode so much. I just idolize John Delancey. He is amazing. I'm sorry. He's just so cool. So, yeah, that is it. It's a mixed response. Season two over the other two, but season three episode is my favorite. How would you explain the fandom to someone that's never even heard of the show or fandom itself? First, I would be like, hello, good sir. How are you today? And they would be like, oh, that's cool. I'd be like, have you ever heard of ponies? And they're like, "Mm, ponies. I'm like, yes, ponies, Technicolor talking crazy ponies. And they're like, oh, for little girls? And I'm like, no, sir, no. Well, yes, but no. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, that is who is it intended for. But have you yourself, sir, ever tried the ponies for yourself? Try me. How would try? Watch the show, sir. (laughs) I don't, I don't know. Well, that's just how, that's like a bastardization of how I would really do it. Like, I would just be like, um, so I, I've had people ask me about it and I've just told them, you know what? I, I, I say, well, have you ever heard of the iron giant? And most of, most people have heard of the iron giant. Have you heard of the iron giant? Yes, I have one of my favorites. Yes. So like everybody loves the iron giant, right? Yeah. And then I say, okay, how about a uh, foster's home for imaginary friends? And, of course, most everybody knows about that amazing show. Mm. I love that show. Have you seen that show? I've seen a few episodes. I never actually sat through the whole thing, though. It's a great show. I watched it all the time when I was younger. And then I continue with the list of what Lauren Faust has done. I I say, how about Powerpuff Girls? And the the guy's like, yeah, you know, that's the show that every little boy watched and lied about. You know, so... (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, and I'm like, well, all the producer and like the mind behind all those shows is the mind behind this new My Little Pony show. And most of the time they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, Hasbro hired her to totally revamp it. But I, I say, you know what? It's just a really good show. And there's and the, the fandom is really, really, really active on the Internet. Like you can't go on to meme base these days without having stumbling across a pony joke on the front page. Right. So, and so, <clears throat> so I just say, you know what? I'm not going to force you to check it out, but if you want to check it out, don't watch the first episode first, please. For the love of crap, watch like Sonic Rain Boom or something like that. Because I actually have a few episodes that I've shown to people who aren't bronies and they've gotten into the show because I showed them those episodes first. So yeah, that is that is what I do. Um, when I explain it to people, I just have a few set um, episodes that I know people are drawn to, you know, like Sonic Rain Boom, Lunar, Luna Eclipsed. That's awesome. Uh, That's like my favorite still. Yeah. Um, I love Luna Eclipse. That's like my second on my list. Uh, and to Star Trek fans, I explained that one of the villains is played by Q and then almost instantly they jump on the bandwagon, but <laughs> You know, John Delancey. Again, the master, but whatever. That is what I do. Who do you really want to meet face-to-face in this fandom? Oh, good gravy. Uh, Okay, well, um, two people come to mind. One, of course, would be Tara Strong. I have not met her yet. But one of the other factors of me actually watching the show was noticing, Oh, hey, Timmy Turner is Twilight Sparkle. (laughs) I was like, oh, hey, look, look at that. And then... Uh, and she was also Harley Quinn in the Batman games, and I love the Batman games. Who doesn't? And so, and then like she was so many voices from my childhood, and so I just really want to meet her and like hug her or shake her hand or something and say, "You, ma'am, are amazing." I I would really just like to say that, and she's like one of my idols, too, for voice work. She's in everything. Just about. <laughs> <laughs> and so. Yeah, so Terra Strong would be one, and I know everyone's like, oh, I've saw Terra Strong at something or other con. Well, I'm 
a poor college student. So I wish I could go to cons, but whatever. Um, well, I guess that ties in with like, have you ever gone to any cons and would you want to go if you haven't? Well, actually, the Bo Galbronis studio has been invited to this con in Salt Lake City that we're going to in April. So that'll be one. I get in for free. But, but yeah, I mean, I've gone to a few cons, but I've never seen Terra Strong. So I and I really want to. So there's that. Secondly would be uh, the master himself, John Delancey, because he's amazing. He's like the brony. Mm. He's the brony. I thought Stephen Colbert was at one point. (laughs) He was. I saw that video. That was funny. (laughs) And number three would be Peter New, because I just love the simplicity of Big Mac. Now, important question. Are you in this for fun, fame? I'd have to say for the fun and the fame. Mostly for the fun. The fame is just like the the side dish, I guess you could say. It's really fun to sit down, like after a hard day's work at school or at work, and get to work on some voice acting, you know, just pulling up a script and warming up your voice and just doing it. It's really fun. I really enjoy it. And uh, the, the fame, of course, has gotten us to be invited to the Crystal Mountain Pony Con in... Uh, April, which is in Salt Lake, and I hope to be invited to more so I can go for free, you know, stuff like that. I don't know. I'd really like to go, and all these people in the Bogabroni chat's like, I'm going to this con, I'm going to this con. I'm like, I'm not going to any con. <laughs> so, so it's like, um, <clears throat> for fun, mostly. I really don't care about money um, or attention. Well, actually, the attention, kind of. I mean, if you do something, you kind of want to be, you know, recognized for it. Like, people go, oh, hey, good job, you know, like like that. But, you know, it's mostly for fun. It's just because it's my dream to one day go into performing, and voice acting is one of the things that is a potential, pers- is a, is a potential possibility. So, fun. I just, I just threw this question in here because I was only curious. What's the best and worst Sonic game you've ever played? I'm going to start with the best, okay? The best. And the best I've played, and I'm being completely honest, is Sonic Generations. Oh, yes. Sonic Generations is a great game. I think it is. It's not bad as everyone makes it out to be. No! And I don't understand why people complain about it. I'm just like, dude, they brought back classic side-scrolling things. Stop! Just stop! It's, It's a great game because it's not broken, like the worst game I'm going to explain to you here in a second. We probably already know what it is. Uh, I'm uh, going to take a wild stab at Sonic Rider Zero Gravity. No, actually. <laughs> that was not the worst Sonic game I've ever played. But back to, back to Sonic Generations. I'm gonna, The best thing I liked about Sonic Generations was the boss fights. Those were some of the most fun Sonic boss fights I've played in my entire life. Like, I loved fighting, like, Silver. When he's throwing crap at you and you're running, like when you're running and he's throwing stuff at you and you just have to dodge and then it goes to side scroll. It's it's a really unique play style to switch from 3D to 2D like that, you know, and the soundtrack is incredible and you got great gameplay and I just really like Sonic Generations and it's got platforming and I love platforming. I love platforming. And now for the worst. And that would be Sanic 06. Sanic freaking 06. Oh, good heaven. I have yet to meet a person that actually likes that game. Oh. Sanic 06. And yes, I'm saying it like the game grumps do because I'm enjoying it far too much watching them play it. Uh, okay, like, good. I was about to ask if you like seen no. the game grumps play it. Yes, yes. I'm just like, yes, Ego Raptor. Yes, John Tron. Suffer! Go through what I went through. But Sonic 06 is just broken. And I have to agree with the Game Grumps. There was no playtesting for it. There was none. There's so many glitches and it just looks bad. And there's like, like I said, it's like the story is like a bad fan fiction. The girl, the girl makes out with him at the end. That's like bestiality combined with necrophilia because Sonic, for all intents and purposes, was dead. (laughs) I don't know what's creepier fact that she made out with an animal or a corpse 
I will never, ever play it again. And I'm just far enjoying it far too much watching the Game Grumps play it. What is this? <laughs> That's my favorite moment, too. What is this? <laughs> so best Sonic Generations, worst Sonic 06. Ugh. Ugh. Remind, me, remind me to eat, like, just mail you a copy of it and have you play it again just for fun. I still have it. Oh, God. I found it the other day, and I resisted the urge to stomp it. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. Onward. All right, back to ponies. Onward. Okay. Back to ponies. <laughs> Such a Screw all the Sonic stuff. Back to ponies. <laughs> all right. Um, what pony resembles you out of the main six? Rainbow Dash or Pinkie Pie? Rainbow Dash because I like to get through things fast. I hate it when people go back on their word and, you know, like loyalty like that. And that's what Rainbow Dash is. And I'm just like, dude, if you tell people you're going to do something then do it you know don't don't flake out so rainbow dash because she likes to get through things fast and she's loud and i'm loud and then Pinkie pie because she never runs out of energy she's always hyper like i am one of i i am unfortunately a morning person i wake up by default at like seven or eight in the morning i kid you not Thanks. and i'm full of energy sometimes when i go to bed i don't really go to bed i just go i'm bored so Pinkie pie because she's like really hyper and uh full of energy and rainbow dash because of uh always wanting to get through things fast and just get things done and yeah so i guess those two things all right what if suddenly they are both right next to you what do you do whoa 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 they're both they're both whoa first i would ask them how they got <laughs> because no, first I would I would pinch myself. No, <laughs> slap myself or shoot myself in the kneecap or something. <laughs> because <laughs> be like, what po ponies? Nah, nah. <laughs> no ponies in my room. And then when I shoot myself in the kneecap and I go, Ugh! I'm awake. Then I ask them how they get here. And then and then I give them both a big hug because I love ponies dearly. Good answer. And, and and then I hang out with them. <laughs> and I would have Pinkie Pie throw my family a party just because everyone needs a Pinkie Pie party. I know the feeling. I need one in my life. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, like, I, I would just, I just, I just love my family. And so, like, they're so good to me all the time. So, I, if, like, I would have them throw a Pinkie party. Hmm. With Rainbow Dash, we're giving a sonic rain boom overhead. And then we would hang out. And then I would hug them again. And then I would go to Equestria with them and say hi to everybody and then come back. You wouldn't stay? Nah, no, no, nah, no. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I would go back periodically, but I wouldn't stay there. Ah. Like, if, if, like, the way that they got here was, like a, like, a portal or something that I could just go through whenever I wanted, sure, I'd go back. What's your favorite pony-related song and your favorite brony animation? Fan-made Brony song that's my favorite is a uh, is a tie, I, I believe, uh, between the Loyalty song by Mondo Pony. You ever heard that song? Yeah, I have. That's a good song. I like that song. And it's it's a tie between that and Rainbow Factory. Oh, I love that song. Because I have I, I am a piano player of eleven years, and I just love how he integrated piano into heavy demonic dubstep. So That's basically what I would describe that to heavy demonic dubstep. Yep. Kudos to wooden toaster for that song. I really, really like it. And I've been looking for the piano notes so that I could learn how to play it. I don't want to be biased and say one of the ones I voice in or produce. <laughs> I, I really don't because that'd be horrible. So aside from the stuff that I've been in and produced, I'd have to say, um oh geez epic wub time with uh octavia and vinyl scratch nice yeah i i mean that's probably a lot of people people's favorites but i just really like it because it's the first time that really vi like no whacking who is an excellent vinyl scratch by the way mm. and whoever did octavia really got to show their stuff and no one had really 
tried to do that with them before and i think that that animation got them more popular in the fandom because it has like a couple million views um but i really really like that animation i I think it's really funny and really well done i'm gonna quickly jump back to another thing um about kingdom hearts just very quickly oh oh, we're back to ponies guys (laughs) Oh, come on, you know me. I'm, I'm a variety person. I will go all over the place if I want to, and I can change the questions because I'm the host, and I can do whatever I want. Oh, yeah, I suck on it, you subs. <laughs> <laughs> just, just kidding. I love you. Most I of love you. you all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, most... Kingdom Hearts. Um, what would you say is your favorite game from that series? I'm still going to have to do two. Kingdom Hearts 2. I mean, I like all the spin-offs that they've made on like the handheld systems, but two has the most immersive story, and it's more playable than the first game. Yeah, let, let's <laughs> let's face it, the first one was just like, oh god, no. Oh yeah, the first one. I I've only beaten the first one once, and it was hard. It was so hard. And let me guess, and- Sephiroth was almost impossible. Ah. <laughs> Going no. up against him, thinking you're all invincible and crap. You just go up to him, hey, Sephiroth, one slice he, dead. He, he, he stabs you with his 12-foot sword, <laughs> and you're like, oh, oh. He was actually beatable in the second game. I beat him once. So it's... But Kingdom Hearts 2, I think, has a way more immersive story than the first one. It has more colorful characters when you introduce Organization 13. Hmm. And I love the combat style into like with the different forms you can take. I love that. That's great. Mm. So two is my favorite. Um, I'm looking forward to three. I know it's happening because seriously, <laughs> stop doing spinoffs as much as I love the spinoffs. As much as you love seeing all the new worlds, which by the way, a little very quick follow up question. What's one world you think they should put in there? Should? Yeah. <laughs> Star Wars. Lightsaber keyblades. <laughs> I do <knew> it. <laughs> just, just, just kidding. But if they, if if they, if they put it a Star Wars world, that would be so cool. But um, for real though, I think it would be cool if they put in. Jeez, there's they've they've really done a lot. Haven't they were they? originally going to put in Toy Story in one of them, and they're also going to try oh. for Jungle Book too. Are you kidding me? Well, okay, here's funny. Toy Story, yes. Here's the thing. Yeah, I found out in the Kingdom Hearts 2 beta there were actually some unfinished graphic designs for Buzz and Woody as summon characters, but they were scrapped. Ooh, yes, they must do Toy Story. They must. And then Jungle Book, they just they didn't finish the level, so they canceled it. Okay, I seriously think that Toy Story. That's my for real answer. Star Wars is my joke answer. <laughs> Toy Story is my uh, is my real answer. I think that would be amazing. Because who doesn't love Toy Story? Seriously. I cried at the end of Toy Story 3, fellow men. <laughs> <laughs> I was not ashamed to do so. All right. Uh, this is sort of a combo question. What do you think keeps you going and what helps motivate you to create more? What keeps me going is that it is one day my dream to go into performing somehow with, and like I said, voice acting is one of the things that I could possibly do. And the more I do, I feel like the more experience I get. You feel me? Yeah, I get you on that. Yeah, like that's why I accept the majority of the offers that come my way, even if the people who are making the project like flake out like they a lot of times do i have i do the voiceover for them before they flake out and the experience voicing for it i mean i mean obviously it's very really depressing that they i mean it won't ever happen right right but the experience doing each and every part and all the different voices that i do and occasionally seeing it come to life is what keeps me going. And I I think it's a great experience for when I'm back from my mission, I'm out of school and potentially something I could go into. Hopefully. I mean, if I can impress people with the variety of voices that I can do, I don't know. It's just, that's what motivates me. And that's what keeps me going. That's why I want to keep doing it because I have fun doing it. 
I like the experience, and I hope to one day go into that field. All right. So. Do you have any tips for fellow voice actors? Ooh. Fellow voice actors, just get yourself out there as much as you can. Like, do what do what I did, like when Sonic X Abridged kind of stopped for me. I just made those demo reels, and that's how my brony vo- voice acting, I guess you could say, career kicked off is because um, when we stopped Sonic X Abridged, I decided, you know what, I want to contribute to this community. And so I'll put up these demo reels and hope people will want to want me to be in their stuff. Go ahead. Show show off your talents. Like make if you think you have a good voice for a character, go ahead and make a reel of it. Like with just a picture on YouTube like I did. Um, and who knows? Like when well, at least when we're casting projects for Bogal Bronies, we always if we don't have a part, the first thing we do is we well, obviously we ask our voice actors and voice actresses in the studio if they can do it and if none of them can then we go to youtube and we type in so-and-so audition like say we needed a brayburn va um the the well this is figurative of course i mean we have a brayburn va but say we needed one we would type in brayburn va audition or demo reel or something and a lot of people do that so if you really want to get out there and do and get to the point where i am then just make just get yourself out there somehow make demo reels of your of what you can do and someone will find it somewhere and uh you'll get in it like i have and it's really fun so that's my tip don't don't ever doubt that you can't do something like if you think that you have a good voice for something try it and then go off of what other people say like yeah I mean, I didn't think I had a good shining armor voice at first, but now look at me. I'm Milo Portal. <laughs> Jeez. So excited for that, by the way. Where would you be today without My Little Pony Friendship is Magic? Okay. Well, I'm just going to go on the basis that um, I never found it. If that were the case, then I wouldn't. Well, I mean, I probably still would know her, but um, we wouldn't have bonded over ponies. You're, like you mean your girlfriend love- here. Yeah, like, we probably wouldn't have the connection that we do today. Um, And it's, I mean, it's a great connection, and I love her to death, but we probably wouldn't have the same kind of connection. Mm. Secondly, I would probably be bored, (laughs) because Sonic X Abridged is on extended hiatus for the reasons I previously explained, and so there would be nothing to do. You know, they're just like, I'd have to find... I mean, ponies is like the main thing that I have exerted my talents into, and it's, I mean, if I didn't have that, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be co-founding an amazing studio, but I wouldn't be working with all these amazing people, and I wouldn't be part of one of the best communities that I think has ever existed. I mean, it, 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 it really is a great community, and if I... I'd probably just be some poor college kid uh, doing voiceovers for kicks and giggles for something else. Maybe I would have started another bridge series with the voice of Tails in my uh, dub, but I haven't been able to get a hold of him that much. So, whatever. I I, I probably I would not be the same. That's for sure. I would not be talking to you now. <laughs> Because obviously you found me because of the pony stuff, right? Well, that, and I also was looking up some Sonic X stuff, and I happened to stumble across that. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. You were like, oh, hey, it's the pony guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> That's where I'd be today. Nowhere fun. <laughs> Just really bored and really depressed. Really bored? Well, I, I w- would have gotten over it eventually. But, you know, ponies just helped me out of the rut. Something else would have gotten me out of it, but... In this case, it was ponies, and I'm glad it was ponies. And on that note, I think that's a great way to end it. So, um, oh, yes. <laughs> I'm going to put Z- Ziggy stuff, if I can call you Ziggy. Yep, go ahead. Right. Fine. Damn, Ziggy, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to put Ziggy stuff in the description. Check it out. All the stuff is really great. Once again, congrats on getting into my little portal. Why, thank you. I am particularly excited to see the new episode. And as for me, like, comment, subscribe, swag, all that good stuff if you haven't seen the Dot Mo- <laughs> series. <laughs> <Why? You're- laughs> Finally, somebody actually acknowledges that. <laughs> well, I just barely saw swag the other day. Yeah. So, so whatever. And I, I was just like, ha, huh, 
I see what you did there. <laughs> All right, on that note, see you people later, and do you have anything to say before we go? Uh, you are all amazing people, and I well, have been honored to have been interviewed by Zach today. So, keep calm and brony on, 